Brian and I didn't, uh, we don't actually cover all news from 14 and the official 14 hour broadcast, uh, coming up this July. Uh, so let's, it's July 1st is the time I'm filming this. Let's talk about, uh, what the 14 hour broadcast means and all that. I, I think Haps will probably get to a lot of the core details. So let's, let's go hang out and, uh, get to it. Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the upcoming schedule for the 14-hour broadcast for Final Fantasy XIV. They normally do these around the yearly anniversary in late August, or perhaps the holiday season in December, but this most recent one has seen a lot of delays because of the events over the last year, so they're finally getting to do a 14-hour broadcast on Friday, July 9th. 2021. Now, while we've day. gotten tons of fun and fluff, some great meme templates and screenshots out of the previous 14-hour broadcast, something that they often don't have is a whole lot of information about upcoming patches, and in this case, the upcoming expansion. And I want to make this video to temper anyone's expectations that that is going to change. And fortunately, they've already put that in the post itself. Let me explain. So first we have the actual schedule. It's going to be starting uh, Friday, July 9th at 6 p.m. Pacific and, like it says, running for 14 hours. Now they have a whole schedule here, an introduction, letter from the producer live, which is the big thing that I'm sure people are looking at. How do you like Heidelin, which they do go over all these other events, a live Q&A, Sokin's play-by-play, -play, uh, Our Tales of Adventure, Hiroyuki versus Yoshi P, round nine so that covers pretty much everything with looks like about 30 minutes yeah about 30 minute gaps in between each of these events now one thing to bear in mind that in an old lodestone post which i've prepared to pull up they 6 p.m pdt uh is i believe 8 p.m cst so uh keep in mind this is a japanese game and so uh for anybody that have not watched live events like this before anybody new to the 14 space that wants to take part in these live events um the audio is traditionally in Japanese only. That's noted right here. The audio will be in Japanese only. There is a, um, some of these are live translated sometimes, but when they are not, anytime they are not, the Reddit Discord community for uh, 14 has a couple of people who go and do a live translation, uh, a rough live translation, and then they go back and clean it up a little. Uh, and they do an incredible job and they post it on the Final Fantasy 14 Reddit's Discord in the live translation section. Um, there's a couple of them that do it. It's an incredible service to the community. It's what Brian and I use to cover these events live. It's what we use when we put out uh, patch note uh, news and anything like that, letting you guys know. And so definitely anything they can translate. As far as the time of day, it is not uncommon for these to be inconvenient. A 14-hour broadcast starting at 8 at night, for those of you doing math, means that it would end at 10 a.m. the next morning. Um, that's a hard ask. So the beauty of them hosting schedules and things like this is you can set alarms and say, I really only want to be there for those sections. I do remind everyone that all of the audio is available in Japanese only. This isn't like the fan fests where they actually have a live translator. They're basically just laid back and kicking it while they celebrate Final Fantasy XIV, as opposed to a more official presentation for everyone around the world to enjoy. So for a lot of people, that's going to mean already, you know, not staying up, maybe catch some translations on Reddit or on Discord or something like that later. But you might be thinking, okay, well, the live letters first, though, so probably they're going to be talking about expansion information during that. Well, I noticed that when they announced the live letter timing, you know, when it was going to be during the presentation, who the special guests were going to be, it said there was a 6.0 digest on the schedule. And a digest normally means just going over stuff we already know. And that has been confirmed in this 14-hour schedule post. The 65th installment of the letter from the producer live... So for anybody talking, wondering what a live letter is, because this is the 65th one, but actually Zeppelin posted a YouTube uh, a YouTube uh, poll the other day for what expansion was your first expansion, and it was overwhelmingly, I think it was like at the time that I clicked the survey uh, to put my Realm Reborn vote in there, and then I was like, oh no, that means Brian can't vote for pre-Realm Reborn, uh, the because we share an account. Um, Should have voted as gaming, kind of. But it was like 56% at the time, Shadowbringers. And so for many people, live letters are not something that they're used to because most of Shadowbringers, things have been a little weird. Uh, so traditionally during a patch, we get two parts of live letters for each patch, but we also get them at various times throughout the year for things building up to expansions and all of that. It is not uncommon them, for them to take place at an E3 or at a fan fest or whatever, depending on how the timing falls. Uh, 
So at various conventions, we'll get them. And a live letter consists of two parts within that. So the first live letter for a patch, this is not for a patch, we are in 5.55. There are no more big patches. There are just small patches. I mean, if, do you, if we get data center visit, that's not small, but there's not full MSQ patches between here and the expansion. Uh, so for 5.55, for example, uh, you would get part one, which would have a general overview of everything we know is coming in the patch. So that'll say, hey, we're getting more story. You know, we're getting a dungeon. You know, whether or not you're getting a raid or a trial or alliance roulette or whatever, um, you know, they'll reveal maybe the name. Uh, they might show us a screenshot. They might not. Uh, they're very careful about spoilers. Uh, talk about any side content updates, any quality of life updates. And then they may mention offhand whether or not there are job updates coming, but they won't tell you anything about them. Part two historically is where they go in and they show us gameplay to those events and they show us actual, uh, here's what the new raid's going to look like. Let's run up and let's run around the stage and the, you know, I don't want to show the boss. I don't want to show the boss, but it's real. It's here. Uh, and so they're, they're usually very careful about that and they get a chance to go in and demo, you know, updates to UI, uh, show us anything that they are willing to show us. And it's a chance to kind of get a taste of what we got in part one in a greater level of detail. They used to reveal job changes during that, but all that did is make people either fine or upset. It was never positive. So those had largely been moved to the patch notes after the kind of the servers go offline that, that like midnight before the patch uh, ballpark time. And so now they're, they're, much more careful about what they reveal as far as job updates. Remember that job updates for the job action trailer uh, that we got last expansion were about a month out from the expansion, if I remember correctly. So I would say that those are tied more to the media tour, which was something they said they would likely try to do between September and November. Uh, and so that's that's in the future. Um, so when he says a digest on this, this sounds to me like a part one for 6.0. And a part one for 6.0 um, means that it's mostly just going to be stating kind of what is in the expansion, what's in 6.0, which is already things we know. We already have that kind of feature list. So it might offer some additional insight. It might give them a chance to put some clarity around things. Um, but if it really is just a digest, I don't picture this being widely revealing to anybody that has watched, you know, anywhere close to 65 of these things. <laughs> will review recently announced information for Endwalker. That means no job information, which you shouldn't be expecting before October, regardless of the fact that this was happening, and likely very little information about any other detail. Now, do I think they'll give us nothing? No. Do I think that could happen, actually? Yeah. Do I think <laughs> that they'll give us maybe a smidgen? Sure. But nothing groundbreaking. They're probably not going to be going over any major systems that we're waiting to hear more about, such as the Island Sanctuary or the changes they're planning on making to PvP. I'd love to be surprised, but now that they've iterated twice, that is a digest and going over already revealed information, I think they're going to be keeping anything new to a minimum until probably around August at the earliest, around the game's actual anniversary with the rising event towards the end of August. So the second half of the show um, is usually when they do like interviews and things like that. So when we have collab content uh, like Yorha, it's not uncommon for them to have a guest there or something like Monster Hunter when we did that. Uh, the second half of the show is they're, 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 they can be two or more hour long broadcasts. Uh, the second half of the show is when we get more of just the general insight into the game. Maybe they have somebody come that's from the team that helps organize Final Fantasy XIV logistically. Like, how do I organize, how do I plan out what the team's resources are doing? And it gives us insight into the game. They're not big reveals. You're usually watching that entire thing for a general tone and a deeper understanding of the game. And there's a couple, one or two or three remarks that become really important during that. Uh, it's also where there's kind of a QVC style uh, introduction of all the things that you can buy. So usually that also ends in a pretty heavy merch push. So if you like buying 14 related merch, staying till the end of those tells you all these new things that are being announced. The second half of that show is going to be joined by Yosuke Saito and Yoko Taro, both of whom were the collaborative developers for the near collaboration with Yorha Dark Apocalypse. And they're going to be answering questions. Now normally... You might expect me to not really think too much about this section, but I'm sure there's some questions, and it'd be really interesting to see if there's some answers. 
So I'm a little hopeful for that section, but only a little bit. There's also, they're also taking questions on the official forums, and I bet you if I go to that, there's questions that have nothing to do. Every time there's a Q&A forum, there's people who just ask like the weirdest questions that have nothing to do with the topic. And then they're going to be doing miscellaneous announcements at the end. I do suspect that they will confirm the announcement of the Death Unto Dawn, the new soundtrack that was just made available for pre-order. Probably bring that up. Probably bring up Fender again, since, you know, that's going to be another thing. Probably bring up some of the other jewelry and, and uh, accessory-related things we saw at the most recent fan festival. And then I think they will confirm that they will probably be doing something, another live letter, uh, and giving us a time frame. Again, I'm expecting end of August, maybe early September. Uh, probably early August more so, because I think they said September to October, they were probably thinking about doing a media tour, which would mean they'd probably not want to do it towards the beginning of September. So that's what I think. I think that's the next time we get any new information at all about Endwalker. Now they do have other sections here, and there are things that we like to catch the next day after we wake up for those of us in the States. Uh, How do you like Heidelin is a gameplay segment where Captain Takeda and Quinsaka undertake some challenges, and in this case, they're going to be learning some blue magic, and people playing on these may or may not be live translated. The live letter likely will be when you talk about the Discord side. On the same servers as them, often join up in parties and also try to learn blue magic at the same time. Then there's a live Q&A. Now, maybe we get something that we weren't expecting out of this. Uh, producer and director Naoki Yoshida will be answering questions uh, posed live by players. Now, historically, Q&A is done live. Uh, the way they work at FanFest is there's uh, some microphones and people line up, and when they get to the last question, everybody that has not got to ask their question is asked to sit down. There is something different that has come to my understanding from the way the Q&A was handled at FanFest, at Digital FanFest. They put a bunch of people on the screen. They only got to about the number that I expected them to get to because he's incredibly detailed in his replies. Even if somebody asks a very superficial, uh, light question, he usually uses it as an opportunity to answer something much deeper on that topic. So he uses the questions more as a prompt. And uh, so even if you just say something like, can you tell us about the story of 6.0? He'll talk about the development. I mean, like the answer is no. And so, but they won't stop there. He'll go into a whole thing about how they plan for story and about what they hope for the story. And it'll turn into a five or a 10 minute thing. And so even an hour long Q&A, he doesn't get to that many posts. But what they did uniquely about the Digital Fan Fest is because those were all pre-screened, pre-done questions. Um, and so they already knew they were important. They already knew that they were either widely asked or that they were something that they wanted to talk about as a team. Um, those... Q and A's at the last fan fest. What is unique about that is that all of those people were told that they would get email responses. This was told to me by one of those people that they would get email responses to all of their answers. And so what is unique about that versus a live Q and A is that we actually got more answers than we do during a live one because we got all of them. And so I believe there were 30 people. That means there were 30 questions answered when you talk about both verbal and public and written and private. And so what I would ask to anybody that gets selected or anybody that got selected is please go out to the Reddit or wherever. Uh, I haven't found a ton of these. If anybody has links to them, that's great. Please share these because 30 questions is more than any single interviewer ever gets to ask. These were pre-screened, so they're probably 30 unique questions, at least in some way. Uh, and so for me, I would love to see, I mean, an average interview can be anywhere from three to 10 questions. Uh, in that kind of ballpark is what comes to mind. You're talking about having multiple interviews worth of written responses and they're written. So you don't have to worry about like translation and they had a chance to sit and think. And so um, when you talk about there being 30 people, I think that there's, 30 answers out there, and I would love to have those um, for context on whatever topic they asked about. We may be able to hear his replies to a wide variety of inquiries, including burning questions, popular topics, heartwarming experiences, and more. Again, I don't expect a whole lot. However, sometimes the insights we get out of these can be quite good. I hope he told Usually there's only one or two questions that he gets to that really mean anything to me um, personally, and that probably is the same for everybody else. It may not be the same one or two questions, uh, but if you're watching that segment, expect the majority of it to really just show you how diverse the community is, and one or two be like, oh, thank goodness, I really wanted to know this.
tones down the length of his answers because the live Q&A that they're using a picture of for here from the fan fest, um, it just took one question, took like 15 minutes out of the whole hour. And this is an hour and a half, but still, I hope he tones down the length of his answers, especially because it doesn't need to be directly translated. We'll just be getting translations over social or Discord or things like that. Sokin's play-by-play. -play. We already have a great screenshot here, so why not more great screenshots? Uh, Sokin's going to be talking about a lot of the background music for Final Fantasy XIV. So if you're someone who's into music and interested on his insight, that's a translation at the very least you'll definitely want to catch. Because Sokin... Is those actually, uh, so panels like this uh, at FanFest actually provide a lot more information than just this. So sometimes these will also go into um, the fact that in the sound design, there's a back and forth with the level design. And he says, hey, there's this moment, it's opening up. Is there a moment in the dungeon where it opens up? And like, tr what's the tone? Where does this sit within the story? And so when we talk about, um, you know, they've, they've talked about voice actors. Even if you don't care about voice acting, even if you play with the game sound off or whatever, and you're like, ah, so little the game's voice acted. Anyway, it gave us a lot of insight into why the game can only be voice acted as much as it is, how they roll out patches worldwide, a little bit of influence into how far ahead the story is written, what's nailed down, what's not, what goes through localization teams, what role does the lawyers and HR do have to protect them, what role do the writers and the more creative. It gave us all of this insight surrounding voice acting. And so this here will be incredibly interesting, even if you do not uh, need more information from Sokin currently, even if you do not need more insight and commentary around specifically background music, uh, this can be incredibly informative, uh, especially with somebody so connected to the team. This is, this is something where it is likely that his job overlaps with a lot of other jobs. And so this could be something where you learn what role music has in pushing forward or slowing down other content that you want to see make its way into the game. Is always super insightful about what he goes, what he does, or how he goes into creating different tracks. So that is no doubt going to be definitely a read it back later after I wake up type of thing. Our Tales of Adventure, they're bringing in some big fans of Final Fantasy XIV from over in Japan, and they're going to be sharing experiences about the game, something that I think we all enjoy doing, but I will be fast asleep. In fact, I'll be waking up just about the time this is ending, so I'm curious to see if this gets translated and I can read it the next morning. And then finally, Hiroyuki versus Yoshi P round 9. This is kind of a recurring thing that they've been doing for quite some time. It's a special talk session that covers a wide range of topics, as they say, featuring, of course, Hiroyuki and Yoshi P will be opposite of him. And that will be the end of the 14-hour broadcast. So yeah, we're going to be pretty much in the dark about Endwalker stuff for quite some time. Hopefully there will be some interviews throughout the summer to kind of sate us while we wait for some new information. We do have the Make It Rain event coming up. Obviously the Twitch and Final Fantasy XIV collaboration is still ongoing. And then we still have the Final Fantasy XV event in September. 5.58, which will probably unlock the remaining weekly locks that we still actually have in the game. And other than that, it's definitely going to be a dry season. Fortunately, a busy summer to keep up. You'll notice he didn't say data center visit. We don't have explicit confirmation that that's in 5.58. We don't know exactly when that would be here. There's a lot of reasons that on a technical level, if possible, they would want to have that out prior to Endwalker. Um, there was a leak that implied that that was going to be the case. And so uh, we don't have explicit things here. And so Happy's been uh, trying to be very careful about not accidentally setting an expectation that can't be delivered on. Um, this sounds to me like the showcase event back in February or fan fest back in, was that May? Uh, and this here in July are doing their best as a whole to act as what three fan fests would have done prior. Um, the one thing that I was sad about losing and dropping down to one digital fan fest with a showcase event prior is that there are a lot of panels. There are a lot of insights into a deeper understanding, those behind the scenes clips to a movie you really care about, that the the people who want to be heavier involved in the game want. They want to go hear from the people that were involved in various aspects of the game, and this is doing that. So I think this is a really good use of the 14 hour broadcast. This is a really good use of that. Uh, not an atypical thing that we would expect from them, but um, 
in a time where we're specifically missing some of the panels and things we would have gotten out of fan fests fan fest would have also restated things we knew during previous fan fests for people that only attended that one fan fest and so uh, this sounds like a lot like that hopefully there's at least one or two new things in there hopefully there's at least confirmation of something i would love to see a confirmation of something like deep dungeon i would love to see one or two sentences outlining a little bit more about island sanctuary or pvp uh but i wouldn't set my expectations that those need to be there um so i would i would love to see something addressing what'll be in 6.0 versus 6.1 um i would love to see anything on more about male viera or Sage or Reaper uh, that they could reveal. I do not expect any of that. Uh, I would set my expectations really low. We will, of course, be summing this up and posting it over to work to game uh, and get that two hours down to something that's more closer to our 22 minute time length. And uh, this is just a whole event that's 14 based, but uh, as far as what's gonna be on screen, it's just gonna be gaming, kinda. <laughs>